Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Glacial Geek Deep Thoughts Thin Coats with me, Phil, the Glacial Geek. Today, uh, I will be working on uh, painting up some of the Fallen that I've got going on that will be going with uh, Cypher. Uh, right now, I don't have the Cypher built or painted. Uh, I'm actually building these and painting these guys to go along with someone else's Cypher that they've built and painted. And they were going to run some regular Marines, but I said, hey, I was actually already in the process, going to be making these guys... Let me just make some guys. So I've been going through this process. I've been using uh, this method that I use to paint black armor, which um, I read it online. I wish for the life of me I'd read, I remembered where I read it. I think it was on one of the Facebook groups. Someone had posted it. And what it is is basically you just take the model, you prime it black, you then do a liberal dry brush of uh, Mechanicum Standard Gray... Yeah, Mechanicus Standard Gray, and then you do a liberal dry brush of, uh, of Fenrisian Gray, and then you just wash the whole thing in Nullin Oil. Uh, the Nullin Oil then takes down all of that dry brushing highlight, uh, and it leaves you with like a very, um, a very detailed and a very robust black. It's not super dark black, which you would just get from a regular plain... Um, just from the primer, but what it does is it gives it dimension, because that was always my biggest issue when I was painting black armor, is painting it and then doing the line, the, the edge highlighting never looked right, um, it was either too subtle or it was too harsh, and it never never felt right, I never really liked it. So I found this method, and I've been using them on my Death Watch, which came out fantastic, I've even done it on a few uh, bikers, uh, which has come out really well, and essentially now I just use that for my black armor at all times, it's really wonderful. Uh, so I do that one coat of, of Nolan Oil, then I go in and I paint all of the details that I want to put in, and then I do it another coat of Nolan Oil. So the, the one coat of, coat of Nolan Oil uh, takes care of most of the painting, and then the, you get two coats over the black armor parts. So it really takes down that highlight so you don't get, it's not just gray models, you actually get, they look pretty black, but they still have dimension that you don't get from just plain black armor. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is I've already done the two dry brush uh, layers on here, so I'm actually going to be just applying some Nullin Oil. I figured the easier I keep it, the more likely I am to get a little bit of work done as opposed to clipping out three pieces from a sprue. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be working on hobby-wise today. I uh, hope you guys have come along with some painting projects of your own. Leave, uh, leave a comment down in the description uh, down below and let me know what you guys are actually working on when you're when you're listening to these and also your thoughts on what I'm talking about but uh, which I've really loved the fact that we've had some really cool con ongoing conversations uh, between you and I uh, and sometimes other people getting involved about what is going on with what I'm talking about which is awesome I really really enjoy that and uh, and I've also had a lot of people tell me that they like to paint along with with me <laughs> as I'm going along hope you get more models done than I do when I'm doing these uh, but uh, yeah so I hope you guys have all enjoyed that um, the topic that I will be talking about today during uh, for the Deep Thoughts portion of the Deep Thoughts Thin Coats is going to be Hobby Burnout. And I shouldn't just say Hobby Burnout, I should say Warhammer Burnout. Because there's all sorts of different levels of burnout that you get with, the, with, with this hobby that we do. From the hobbying, to the painting, to the playing. All of them can leave you with burnout. At different met at different times, and it's a it's a topic that's very near and dear to my heart because it happens to me all the time. So I'm going to go talk to you guys, uh, kind of about what leads to some of that burnout. Maybe you can avoid it, or if you do end up in a in a situation where you're feeling burnt out, you're not sure, you get very little motivation to do anything. Maybe some methods to help change that and get you back on track, get you back to painting, get you back to playing, whatever it might be. Uh, so, the first thing I'm going to talk to you about today is going to be, uh, let's start with the basics, hobby, her, hobby burnout. So, you know, it's the some of the best parts about this hobby is going into the store, finding the model that you want to get, and then purchasing that model. That's, it's plain and simple, it's, it's a lot of fun, it's very little, it takes very little to actually do, and it, uh, it provides with a lot of, uh, a lot of enjoyment, really, um, I've noticed. When I go in and I get to buy a model, I really, really, really enjoy going in and buying things. It's, you know, the, the what do they call it? Uh, retail therapy, getting in there and, and purchasing it because in your mind's eye, you've already, it's already built, it's already fighting for you on the table. You know, that's, it's, it's already doing its job and you don't have to do anything at that point because it's just in a box and no one expects anything of it from you at all because it's just something in a box. Um, 
But then once you get it home, it then sits in that box on your shelf or on your desk or in your room, wherever you keep all of your modeling things, uh, unassembled, just in that box, doing nothing for you. It's not fighting for you. It's not fighting for the Imperium. It's not fighting against the, the false emperor. It's not doing any of those things. What it's doing is just sitting there mocking you. And I have a lot of times when I've had, uh, where I've gone out and I've done a, uh, like a, a binge of buying things. Like when I decided to start my, uh, my death watch, I went out and bought a whole bunch of things because I was like, this is what I'm going to be doing. And I bought them and they sat there unassembled for a long time because it was overwhelming because I looked at this big pile of things that were unbuilt, un, un anything, And uh, it's intimidating to see all of those things sitting there staring at you. So, um, I've de determined, I've developed a method that I like to use that helps me profusely with that, that fact that, cause I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie to myself. I'm not going to just not buy new models. That's the easiest way to, you know, go about it. Just say, don't buy new models until you, until you've built and painted these other ones. That's not realistic. Cause I'm going to look at things. I'm going to see the new things coming out. I'm going to see a triumvirate that comes out and I'm going to want it and I'm going to go buy it. And it's going to end up on the on the queue, waiting for me to uh, get to them, to build and assemble, build paint, and uh, and basically just put together those models. Uh, so what do I do? This back here, I built, I put up, or I should say, my wife put up these curtains. Uh, she enjoyed it because it kept things nice and neat and tidy, and for me, it allowed me to hide all of my shame. Uh, behind a closed door. So I would suggest when you buy a model, when you, if you're not going to be able to get to it right away and you're going to start and you're going to take some time before you can actually get around to building it and doing anything with it, put it away, put it into a, uh, put it in a closet, put it under your bed, put it in a drawer, do whatever you want to do to hide it from view. Because if you're not, if it's not staring at you in the face, it's not going to, it's not going to bring that stress that comes along with a box of unopened minis sitting there waiting to be put together because they're judgy <laughs> until they're, if they're not built yet, they're very judgy and they sit there and they stare at you and they go, why did you buy me? If you're not going to build, if you're not going to build me. And as much as we can keep telling them, I'm going to get to you. I promise I will paint you. It might be a few months down the road because sometimes our, our hobby eyes are way bigger than our hobby abilities at the time and life gets in the way and we can't always paint and, and build everything that we want to right away when we would like to. But that doesn't mean that we should feel guilty about that. You know, life gets in the way of some things sometimes. And I think that's just a reality. That's a, it's a, a, it's a fact of reality. It's not really something to be ashamed of. So if you keep them out of sight, then you no longer have to worry about it judging you. You know, it might be in the back of your mind's eye, but honestly, at that point, if it's in the back of, is, is in the back of your mind, what it becomes then is just a reminder of what you want to get to as opposed to staring you in the face and judging you when you don't want to be judged. So you can take out one box at a time, build it, do whatever you want to do uh, model-wise with it, hobby-wise with it, and then you can move on and don't take out another box until you're done with that one. Um, along those same lines, sometimes we have building binges when we can go out and we're like, you know what, today is going to be a building day and I'm going to build uh, all the models that I can in this day and I will get it over with so I no longer have a bunch of unopened boxes staring at me and making me feel uh, inferior. So um, in that case, sometimes we end up with a, a plethora of uh, models that are already built. And then sometimes we go out and we have a priming day and it's like, I'm going to take all of these models out and I'm going to get the rattle can out and I'm just going to prime them all so that they're ready to go whenever I want to paint them and I can just go at them at the point. Um, best of intentions for both of these because now they're built, they're ready to be painted, ready to go. Or maybe you wanted to build them because you wanted to try them out with your friend before you really, you know, decided to de de dedicate a whole bunch of time to paint them and you just don't have time to paint. It happens. It really does happen. Um, there's a whole lot of methods on, on getting things painted in time, you know, doing an hour a night, dedicating a certain period of time during the week, whatever. But at that point, you still have a pile of models sitting on your desk, staring at you going, I thought you were going to paint me. And I thought you were going to take care of me. And again, in this case, sometimes you can't just put them in the, in the closet because 
they're a bunch of loose models, you know what I mean? And there's nothing much you can do about that. And sometimes you do want to have them out because you do want to be able to get to them. And sometimes it's nice to have a reminder that you want to get to them and do some painting on them. In that case, if you've had a day that you've got just built a ton of models or just primed a ton of models and they're just staring at you judging, almost as judgy as their unassembled friends in your closet, this is what's going to help you. A predator. No. Not a predator, but the box from a predator that is filled with a whole bunch of models. These are random models that I've gotten from friends that I've traded for, that I've bought because they happened to come along, that I found, that I stripped, that I thought I was going to get to, that I primed because I thought I was going to get to, and then other projects came up and I never got to them. For a long time, I just had all of these models sitting on my desk, staring at me, judging me, making me feel really bad about my life choices because I hadn't gotten around to painting them. And the fact is, that's not beneficial. And it, what it does is it hampers your ability to ever get anything painted at that point. So what I do now is I just take the models, once they're built, once they're primed, if I'm not going to paint them right away, because I like to prime in big batches sometimes, especially when I get the rattle can, which is it's almost weather time for the rattle can now up here uh, in Alaska, which is nice. I'm very excited about that. Um, so what I can do then is I take them and I put them in a box and I put that box in my closet and hidden out of mind's eye. I'll take out and have one squad or one group, whatever I'm going to be painting, out on my table at all times so that when I, you know, when I come by and I've got some time, I can get on it and start painting some things. Um, but I don't have an entire army that just is overwhelming. Because if you come into your hobby space and you see an entire, the, the entire chapter of Space Marines staring at you, you think, there's no way I can ever paint this many, so you never start. You don't even paint that one squad that you could have done in the time that you had, you just paint nothing because it's overwhelming to see all of that. If it's out of sight and it's in a box somewhere, or even if it's in a box on your desk, you know it's there, but you don't have to see them, they're not going to judge you. And it lets you look at that one squad and you go, yeah, I can get, I can take care of them. I can, I can put down the, the, the base coat for their armor. I can go in, I can do the highlights in their eyes. I could do, you know, I've got a few minutes that I can take care of a, a few things, maybe do a wash or two. When you see the one squad on your table, it becomes way more doable, way more hand, uh, manageable. And it'll allow you to just do it. Go in when you have the time and do it. And the other ones aren't going to be out there keeping you from trying they're just going to be sitting in their box waiting for their turn to be out on the table and taken care of. Um, so honestly, when it comes to that, that kind of hobby burnout, out of sight, out of mind really helps because you no longer feel bad about it and you no longer feel the pressure to make sure you have all of them. I had the same thing going on with my Gene Stealer cult for a long time. I never got around to painting them because they were all sitting there unassembled on my, in my hobby area waiting for me to take care of them. And I looked at them and it was a gajillion models because I happened to get a really good deal from a friend on, on a whole bunch of models at once because he thought he was going to get into it and then decided he wasn't going to do it. So um, I, he made an offer and I, I took it because I, I wanted to get into GC the Cult and it seemed a great way to, to get a base army. But at the same time, there's a whole lot of models that comes with that. So they were all staring at me, waiting to be assembled, waiting to be taken care of, and I didn't do any of them because I felt overwhelmed. I felt just completely overwhelmed by them. So I put them away in my magic closet of don't worry me. And I've actually gotten around to building and painting a bunch of them because of that. Because then I would go into the, the closet. I would take out the one squad that I wanted to work on. And I would build and, uh, and assemble them and then paint them. And I wouldn't assemble them all because honestly, I have, um, I have my armies that I, I like to play and my tournaments that I like to have painted. Um, but at this point, I have a pretty decent force that's painted that I can bring with them. So I'm wanting painted armies. So I want things to be fully painted before I'm really going to be starting playing with them. That's just me and my preference. So if I'm not going to get around to paint them and build them and paint them, I want them out of my sight so that they're not judging me. Because I've got a whole lot of models that I've bought over the, over the time that I haven't gotten around to building or painting because, you know, my... The decisions changed, or new things came up, new ideas struck me, and other things became priorities. Um, I paint and build a lot of stuff, um, but um, there's still a lot that I need to get to that I haven't been able to get to. So, um, 
they just would never get done if they were all just staring at me, keeping me from wanting to come into my hobby area. So, if away in the closet, they're not bothering anyone, they're still sitting there, and I can always look in the closet and see what I've got coming on so I can plan ahead, because it's always good to keep them within um, proximity at least a little bit, so that you can go and look and plan and figure out what the next steps you want to take when you're feeling a little bit more robust on your modeling behaviors. Um, and when you can think about it with a clear mind as opposed to fright that happens most of the time. Um, so if you are able to go into it with a, with a clear mind, you can look at it and make some plans. So you're like, all right, well, this is what I'm probably going to work on next. So you can actually go and take them out, um, get, make sure you have that one squad that you've got out on the desk that you've got to put together, and it doesn't, it's, doesn't become overwhelming. Uh, so that's kind of what I have there. Another aspect of, of uh, burnout can come with painting is not just that you have a whole bunch staring at you, it's that you've had a whole bunch that you've done. So I've had times when I've painted, I've had a tournament coming up and I've decided that I wanted to run a completely different list than I usually run. Um, and in order to do that, I had to paint just like a metric buttload of bottles that needed to get painted in order to be run in the, in the tournament. Because some of the tournaments I play especially the bigger ones uh, that I've done, uh, like States up here in Alaska, Battle Brothers, those up here in Alaska, uh, Battlezone Ursa, those kind of things. These are bigger tournaments. They require a painting. Um, they don't have to be, you know, golden, they don't have to be uh, crystal brush painting jobs, but they do have to be painted. There's got to be three color minimum. Um, you can't just, you know, there's got to be a bit of effort involved in them. And I like to put a little bit more than just a little bit of effort into them because I know later those same models are probably going to end up on my channel and I want them to look good for you guys. So I, I would have these times when I would spend weeks on end when I was just pi like, like just driving through painting models, like model after model after model was just getting painted. Um, it was really productive, but at the end of it, once it was done and I, I went to the tournament and everything was great, I didn't want to touch a brush to, to if my life depended on it. it. I just completely burnt myself out and there was nothing I wanted to do less than paint another model. This happens from time to time, from time to time, and it's you know it's completely okay. You know, if we all have those moments when we just are just tired of 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 painting because we've we've gone through a big commission. If you're a commission painter, or we've gone through um, just painted a bunch because you want to get some onto a uh, for a battle report in my case, or if you wanted to get them together for a tournament, or just getting together with your friends and you just wanted these guys done. Sometimes it can be just overwhelming and it can burn us out a little bit. Um, and that happens. That, that really does happen. And that's okay for that to happen, you know? Um, but what I like to do then is I give myself some time. I don't sit there and go, oh, I should probably still keep painting. There's so many more that need to be painted. I go, you know what? You did a good job. You painted a whole bunch. Why don't you take this week off? Why don't you take two weeks off, depending on how many I had painted in that period of time? Um, and if I give myself a set period of time that I want to that I'm, I'm, I don't have to feel guilty about not painting for because I've agreed that's my vacation from painting time. I don't feel guilty about it and I actually get back to painting quicker because I'm like, all right, I can take this week, I can take these two weeks and I just don't have to worry about painting. I don't have to feel guilty, that was the plan, I'm not gonna be painting. And I go back and any games that I play, I'll play with ones I've already got painted, I'll you know put any other plans on hold for the painting for two weeks and no pressure. No worry, no need to feel guilty about it. And at the end of those two weeks, I feel refreshed because I haven't been sitting there for two weeks going, oh, I should paint. I've been sitting there for two weeks going, I'm definitely not painting, that was crazy. I feel much better now that I've allowed myself the time to just breathe. Um, if you give yourself that set period of time that you don't have to feel guilty about, you get back to it way faster. Because I've had other times when I've been like, I need to keep painting, I need to get some more models on the table, I need to get some more uh, different armies for my channel, and with that pressure comes a complete lack of productivity. But if I sit there and I go, you know what, I'm going to take these two weeks off, no painting, I'm just going to relax and not worry about it, I come back to it after that two, that two weeks, ready and raring to go, wanting to get in there and start painting some models. Whereas if I tried and was trying to get back into it right away, I probably wouldn't paint anything for two weeks. But then at the end of those two weeks, I would still feel guilty because I hadn't painted anything for two weeks and my productivity would be zero.
So giving yourself some time every once in a while when you've been just completely painting like a madman is good because it lets you take a breather and it lets you get back at it right after that, that period of time that you're going to give yourself and you can go back and feel energized and ready to go as opposed to stressed and worrying because you didn't get anything painted. So, uh, another thing that sometimes happens is after you've painted a large group of, uh, of a single type of unit, you can become completely burnt out because of it. You know, I've had times when I, I had one time when I painted 15 uh, Deathwing Terminators at a time. And I was just go batch painting 15 Deathwing Terminators and getting that white ready and getting going through the whole process and trying to uh, to to wash it properly and make them all come out well. It killed me. By the end of it, I wanted to murder every single Deathwing Terminator I could find with my bare hands, and I think I could have even if they were really there, nine feet tall and full of their armor, because I was just full of rage at them at that point because it was so difficult, just per, like just continually painting the same thing over and over again and pushing through it and making it happen. It was just, it was exhausting and it just burnt me out and I didn't want to touch a brush again because of it. Well, the best thing I did then was I turned around and I built a land speeder. It was a completely different color. I paint my land speeders green because I like my raven wing to be green because I like green and black is a pain in the butt to paint. I didn't know about this method then I still like green, so I go with the green. Um, completely different color, completely different model. It was one model as opposed to 15 models. And what it allowed me to do was it allowed me to just take a fresh start. Start something new, start something different, and and feel energized because this wasn't de these weren't Deathwing Terminators. These were, this was a land speeder. And it allowed me to get in there and paint it and it allowed me to get back into painting. Because once I was done with him, I could go back into whatever process I had been doing with the batch painting, and it was completely fine. Um, so changing things up makes a big difference. I had that with a lot of my Gene Sealer Cult stuff. Uh, recently, I think you guys have seen some of them, I painted up uh, some Neophyte Hybrids, and it took forever. Because it, it started, I was thinking I was only gonna do one squad, but I was painting all of the guys from the kill team, and then I had three extra guys from a Goliath truck, and it ended up being 19 models. And it's 19 dude bros with guns, very similar, uh, a lot of a lot more detail on them than you would expect from just a regular line troop. And it just took forever. It took a long time of, uh, to paint through all of the different models because they're also smaller. There's a lot of intricacies trying to keep things together. And uh, it, oh, it was exhausting at the end of it. Um, so, I turned around and I could have gone on and I was like, oh, I need to paint my icon ward. I need to do more of this. And I was like, nope, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to paint uh, these, uh, going to paint up the, the Fallen. Because I was like, that's something completely different. It's some power armor guys, which are, to be honest, as long as you're not doing something like white or yellow, it's, it's a pretty easy task. You put down a base coat, you put down a wash, you're good to go. Um, so it's an easy paint job. It's not quite as intricate not as worrying about details, and it also allowed me to do something new. And changing up what you're painting really makes a difference. You know, it, it's for whatever reason, it just triggers something in my mind, and I, I imagine it probably triggers something in your mind, that you're doing something different. It doesn't feel quite as uh, monotonous, quite as, as much work when you get to change things up and do something different. And I mean, that's the way it is with a lot of my life. I hate doing the same thing over and over again. Um, I like to do different things, um, so I mean that's what I like to do, and I think that that's what draws me to this hobby is that the ability that no matter even if I bring the same list, it's still going to be a different battle because it's going to be a different opponent, it's going to be a different uh, situation, going to put down the, the the scenery differently. I like things to change, and I like I like playing board games, but I can't play the same board game forever and over and over again because I get a little bit bored because of no pun intended. Uh, of the fact that it's, it's just the same thing that you're doing. And there could be slight changes, but it's essentially the same thing you're doing. With the battle reports, with these things, they're very different. And I can change up my list, I can do whatever I want to do. Um, and with the painting, it's the same thing. It helps me to not feel burnt out from painting if I can change what it is that I'm actually physically painting. Um, so I think those are some methods to help to avoid, uh, to, to counteract 
uh, burnout when you're when you're dealing with this. Um, perhaps something that you can keep in mind is uh, to to avoid burnout in the first place. Keep the number of models that you're painting at a time to a minimum, but more than just one. Because oftentimes, if you're just painting one model, it becomes very frustrating waiting for layers of paint to dry and waiting for areas of paint to dry. And sometimes we feel rushed and we go in and we start try to paint too soon and you end up streaking off some of the old paint and it just becomes a mess and it becomes very frustrating. That happens to me a lot. I like to do batch painting because of that. As you can see here with my, my Fallen guys, I like to do a couple guys at a time because what it allows me to do um, is paint a, uh, the same thing on each of them bit by bit. And as I'm going down the line with with anywhere between five and ten guys, by the time I'm done with that last one, the first one has had plenty of time to dry and I can go back and either put on a second coat or I can go in and start painting something else on him and start the whole process going down. So, um, with that in mind, that's something to keep in mind. If you have too many guys on there, by the time you're done painting one color on 20 different guys, you're ready to punch yourself in the forehead. It becomes so difficult, it becomes so monotonous, painting the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again on 20 different guys, that by the end of it, you just want to be done. And it doesn't really inspire you to then start on the next color or start on the next layer. Of, of paint going down there because you're so tired by the time you're done with that 19th guy that you don't want to keep going. And it cuts down on productivity because usually, sometimes when you're painting the different things, you can keep going for a longer time than if you're just trying to do 19 guys and get the same thing down there because it becomes mentally tiring to keep doing that. But if you keep it down to five, between between five and 10, I've found for batch painting is a, is a good number because by the time you're done with it, the other one's already dry, but you haven't done so much that you feel like you're ready to stab your eyes out with, with that paintbrush that you've got in your hand. So to avoid burnout from that for that same reason, I would highly recommend keeping uh, batch painting because batch painting allows you to keep things moving, but also uh, keep the number that you have in that batch to a between five and 10 because it's, it seems the least uh, stressful number to paint. And in this case, only keep five to 10 guys out on the table. So even if you have to paint 30 different, uh, 30 different uh, tactical Marines, right? Only have a 10 man squad at a time on your table. Have the other guys wet, ready, primed and ready to go, sitting in a box out of sight and paint those 10 guys to completion. Put them on the side, completely done. But have them in view because it's, it's good motivation to see what you've actually accomplished. I like to keep models that I've already painted out and about so that I can see them. Some of them are in my, you know, in my cases ready to go. Some of them I have in there, but others I like to keep around because I get to look at them and be like, yeah, I remember when I painted that. Oh, I'm not a crappy painter because sometimes it becomes frustrating when you're painting and it doesn't look how you wanted it to because it's not done yet, but your mind doesn't let you get to that point. Uh, seeing things in their completed state often helps, helps with that because inevitably anytime I'm painting a model, I get to a point when I'm painting it before I've put on a wash usually. It's usually like right before I'm about to put on a wash that I look at it and I'm like, this is garbage and I hate it and I hate everything and I hate myself because it's garbage and I may as well just melt it down and throw it away because it's worthless. Um, I never, let, I don't let myself get to the point of, of finally washing it and seeing what it looks like before I make that judgment. And then once I wash it, I look at it and I'm like, oh no, never mind, it's good. The liquid talent takes over and and makes it all look nice and defined and like it's a proper model again, not just a splotchy piece of garbage. Uh, so um, if you keep them in smaller batches, you can get through them faster. And you can also, like I said, once you've finished them, leave the ones out there so you can see them and be like, that's what I'm gonna get to eventually. I just did that. I know I can do it. That's not, I'm not looking at online forums of something that the crystal brush painter painted over the course of three months. I'm looking at this 10 man squad that I just did over the course of two nights and I'm ready to go. And then you can start on the next 10 man, put them up there, next 10 man, and suddenly you have 30 painted. As opposed to if you had 30 there, you'd probably still be at the same base coat before you've even gotten at the same amount of time that you can get 30 done because of that same kind of mental stress that it creates. Uh, so that's kind of my, my, <clears throat> my ideas on avoiding and overcoming burnout in the hobby realm. Uh, let's talk about overcoming and avoiding 
burnout in the gaming aspect. Um, I play a lot of games. As you all know, I put out two battle reports a week, which requires me to usually film a minimum and play and film a minimum of two week, two uh, two games a week. Sometimes I film more, sometimes I film less, but it averages out obviously to two a week. And that doesn't even include tournament games they go to. At this point, I don't play a whole lot of just just fun not counting games because any free time that I have often goes to this channel, creating the videos and editing the videos. So. Um, what it, but what it allows me to do is I play a lot of games, and it can become a lot to play that many games, you know? Um, and I have many times when I get to, like, on a Monday, and I'm like, oh, I can't play another game of 40K at this point. Um, I have the benefit of having this channel to motivate me to go and want to do it. Um, but any time that you play a lot of games, if maybe you just got back from a tournament, maybe you did something else, you there's going to be an aspect of oversaturation with the gaming and you're like I'm done I can't play anymore and sometimes maybe that is it maybe you just don't play anymore but say you just got done with a tournament but you're you're trying to gear up for another bigger tournament that's coming up and you think you want to change your list and you want to try to tweak it and practice some games so you still want to go out there and play and game and you know that's what you you and your friends do so not doing it isn't necessarily the best option for you. To get over that kind of hump, sometimes I suggest having a cleansing game. Just a game that is completely ridiculous. Make up completely ridiculous objectives, make up, uh, make up lists that you would never imagine bringing to a game, and just play it to completely have fun. With no pressure, no impulse and no need to win. It's just you and a friend just having a blast. And oftentimes that kind of refresher game reminds you of why you got into this in the first place. So even if you're trying to gear up for a very serious tournament and you've got to play it serious and you want to, and you want to tweak a list so it becomes the, the hardest piece of cheese that you can imagine because you want to stomp your opponents, the reason you got into this hobby wasn't to stomp opponents. The reason you got into this hobby was because it's fun. It's cool. We wanted to push our little plastic spacemen around a table with our friends and throw some dice. So if you have that kind of cleanser game where there's no pressure, there's no, you don't have to really think about it. There's no observations as to how different units performed. It's literally just putting your plastic spacemen on a table, rolling some dice, having a laugh with a friend. It brings you back to the basics of what brought you into the hobby. And it allows you to then go forward the next time and play that super hard cheesy list that you want to play because you want to get ready for that tournament. Because you've had the refresher. You remember why you got into this, and you can get back to doing what you're doing now, which is, you know, tweaking a tournament list. Um, another thing that can often get, can often burn you out from playing uh, is going into a tournament that's a super hard tournament. You know, where you're facing, like, 30 Inari lists, and 47 Warp Spider lists, and 92... Riptide wings, and it's like you can't face another crazy list like that. You know, there's only so many double uh, Necron Harvest Riptide wing lists that you can ever face without feeling completely burnt out. In this case, that refresher game I'm talking about, it works again because what it allows you to do is get back to just the fun basics of this game that allows you to just enjoy yourself and have fun. Um, it doesn't have to be as crazy, you know, um, uh, palate cleansing as that last one. Maybe it's just you play someone who's who likes to run fluffy orc lists, you know? You're not going to be facing all of that craziness. It'll allow you to just run the list that you want to do without having to worry about whether it's going to get shot off the board turn one, and you can just have fun, you know? Having fun with the game does wonders for making you want to play more. You know, and I have that a lot too. Sometimes I just, sometimes I have, if I'm feeling really burnt out from just working so many games, sometimes I call, there's certain players, certain friends that I have that I play that I just, I know that we're just going to be laughing for like three hours straight as we're filming this battle report. And I just need that sometimes. So I make sure that I, I can schedule a game with them and we can go out and win, lose, or draw. We're going to have fun. We're going to have a blast. And it just energizes me to go and do more. Um, another thing is sometimes the opposite 
might occur. Sometimes you might just get burnt out from having to overthink the narrative and you've put in, you've just finished a 30 game highly uh, intensive battle for a planet and you're just kind of burnt out on trying to think, like remember the name of the third bolt gun gunner from that, from the fifth squad from the left. And sometimes you just want to go out there and you just want to throw some dice, you know? Or maybe you want to go out there and you just want to try to stomp someone really hard. Talk to your friends and be like, let's bring the cheesiest list we can. I want you to bring as many riptides as you can fit onto a list. I'm going to bring as many war uh, warp spiders as I can fit on a list. And let's just throw them at each other and see what happens. You know? In that case, bringing back some of the competitive nature of the game can sometimes feel refreshing and energizing. You know, whether it reminds you that you just like to do narrative games or if you just get out there and you're like, yeah, that's fun. Just going out there and just trying to trying as hard as I can to make a list that's going to just try to stop my opponent. And or maybe you just enter into a tournament so you can get three games in during a day, get it out of your system, and then you can go back to, to playing your 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 epic narrative of the reconquest of a city. Um, changing it's essentially it just comes down to changing things up and altering what it is that you do. So another thing you could possibly do is try a different type of game. You know, I have, uh, you can go out there and you, maybe if you've just been playing a lot of 40, uh, regular 40K games, try playing a kill team game or play a couple kill team games. You can fit a bunch of them in, in one night. You know, just go out there, a little bit of a palate cleanser, just try something different. Or maybe you just go out there and you play one of the scenarios that they have. Like, you know, the, the new, uh, the Gathering Storm books have a couple uh, narrative narrative missions that they have in there that are a little asymmetrical, allows you to try things a bit differently. Um, I've been doing that a bit with my Kill Team games. I feel a little bit more uh, freedom to try that. We've also been doing that with the narrative that we've been doing with Thrace. And just trying things that are a little asymmetrical, a little bit different, um, it's fun. It just changes what it is that you do. So it stops the monotony of playing the same game, the same list over and over and over again. It allows you to just try something new, change it up, and keep it different and you'll feel energized to keep going and doing whatever you're doing, you know? Uh, another thing is to keep an eye on who it is that you're playing with. This is something that happens in every single gaming group, no matter where you are, no matter who it is, there's inevitably going to be someone that you just, just rubs you the wrong way, you know? They might be a super nice guy, but when you're playing them, something just rubs you the wrong way. Maybe they're just a super salty about the game. Maybe they're, um, super flippant about the game sometimes people not taking it you know with enough seriousness that you're that you you know you're sitting down here for a couple hours straight if someone just doesn't care and doesn't do it it's like why am i spending all my time doing this if you're just going to be flipping about it 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 varies you know and then no matter what gaming group you're in unless it's just like you and your friends you're probably going to run into some of these people when you're playing and Sometimes that can just sap the energy right out of you. Sap the desire to keep playing, sap the energy to, to keep up with the hobby a bit. So keep that in mind. And like I said before, you know, have that good friend of yours that you know that you need to call up if it happens, that you just need a, a, a reboot of fun, a reboot of, of, of enjoyment in a game. And you can go back and you've got that one guy that you know is just going to bring the laughs, is going to bring the fun. It's going to be the proper respect to the game, however, whatever it is that really bothers you about the person. And you're going to be able to go and feel refreshed and ready to go, you know? And that's, that's, that's important. It's very important that you're able to feel fulfilled in doing this game because we spend a lot of time and a lot of money on this and we put a lot of effort into this. And if you're not enjoying yourself and you're not having a good time with it, there's no point in doing it. You know, we, we spend too much money, too much effort and too much time on this to walk away feeling disappointed. You know, so sometimes it might just be you, you try to get along with a person, but sometimes you just can't, you know, and if that's the case, you have to understand that at the end of the day, if you just keep playing with him, regardless, you're going to you're going to not want to play at all. And that's the worst outcome that can happen. So maybe you cut back on how much you play with them. Maybe you just don't play with them if they're really a jerk. You know, it, it can happen. I've, I've met people in my life that I just don't want to be around. And that's, that's fine. That's just the reality of life. You're not forced to be and hang out with, you're not forced to be around or hang out with people that you don't want to hang out with. You know, you're free to hang out with whomever you want to. And at the end of the day, if not seeing that person and not playing a game with that person is going to keep you more energized in this hobby, 
then it's probably for the better that you don't. Um, so, you know, I think with all of these aspects of avoiding hobby burnout and uh, trying to overcome hobby burnout, it really comes down to changing things up. You know, if the hobby, if the game becomes the same thing as filling out a TPS report, you just got to do the same thing over and over and over again, it's going to get boring. It's going to get old. You're not going to want to do it anymore. So change things up. Paint a different uh, different type of model. Paint, uh, bu build a different type of model. Play a different type of model. Play a different army. Maybe it's time if you've been playing the same army for, for years and your friend's been playing the same army for years and you guys have the same battle over and over again. You know each other's lists that you keep bringing. Maybe it's time to switch things up. Go out and buy a different army. Go out and buy a kill team of a different army. You know, you don't have to go out and buy like a 30,000 point army that you don't know if you're going to want to play or not. Build it by a by a, a kill team. Go out and buy one box. But the new Shadow War, I think they've made it so that you can essentially just buy any infantry box and you've got a, a Shadow War gang or a Shadow War group or whatever it is, the crew. Um, and it keeps it fresh because now suddenly you've got new units that you have to try to figure out, new types of guns that you have to try to figure out. It makes it new, it makes it fresh, it makes it interesting again. And uh, just keeping things different really goes a long way to keeping our, our interest and keeping what we want to do with this hobby alive. Um, so at the end of the day, you got to do what's going to be fun. You got to do what you need to do in order to have fun. So if something is driving you insane, if something is ruining it for you, change it. You know, change of scenery, change of models, change of lists, change of gameplay, change of game type, whatever it is, whatever it takes, change is what's going to keep things, keep you from wanting, from getting burnt out. Because burnout comes from doing the same thing over and over again until it, you're ready to stab your eyes out with a bunch of dice. So, um, I hope that was helpful. Um, those are some of the methods that I use to keep myself going because I have to keep producing good content for you guys to watch and I need to make sure that I keep motivated to keep doing it. Um, so let me know down in the comments below what methods you guys use to avoid burnout or what kind of burnout that you're facing now that you maybe want some advice on how to avoid or, or get out of a funk that you're in with when it comes to hobby and other games. And let me know uh, what your thoughts on some of the things I said. Am I completely off course here? Am I uh, out of my, off my rocker with some of the things I've said? Let me know. I'd like to hear it. And I'd like to hear what you guys have to say. What kind of burnout you face? Maybe there's burnout that I can't even, I haven't experienced myself that I can't really think about that you guys want to let me know. So, uh, yeah, uh, like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what you guys think, and I will keep coming at you with uh, different thought topics. And I got my guys... Uh, the first layer of Nolan Oil done on them. So it was a pretty productive, uh, pretty productive video this time. I got an entire squad level done with uh, with what I wanted to do, as opposed to just clipping out four models from a sprue. So uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, as always, I have been Phil the Glacial Geek, and until next time, have fun. <laughs>